Hello all, I'm back with more on the Color Computer. And you might remember from my last video that I picked up this Color Computer 1. And it's a really nice little machine. It's all set up with just the basic 16K and RF out. So that's the way that I'll be using it. Uh, but there's a problem with this machine. And that is that unless there's a way to save programs, it's kind of hard to use. I certainly don't want to spend hours typing in examples of basic programs for the color computer uh, just to not be able to store them. So I need to come up with a method to store on this machine and I think I have the solution. I went to a garage sale recently and I found this. So before we go further, let's take a quick look at this cassette deck that we're going to use for the project. This is a Sanyo Slimline Slim 10, and I actually picked this up at a garage sale for $5, and it still had the, the price tag on it from G.I. Joe's, which if you don't know, was a Northwest chain of stores that had sporting goods and clothing, electronics, auto stuff. It, it was a really great store and I certainly miss it. They've been out of business for quite a few years, but uh, it still has the those price stickers on there. So this is probably back from the 90s. The only thing that really indicated to me that it might have been used is that the instruction booklet is not included with it. So that's one thing that's missing, and it packs in here tight. I do know that this unit works. I did take the time when I first got it to try it out and test it. And amazingly, uh, it's just like new. It doesn't have any problems with the belts. Uh, it plays and records uh, beautifully. So I think it's going to work really well for this project. And best of all, it is silver, just like the Color Computer 1. So this is going to make a perfect match for it. For it. Um, I can tell that the power supply has been in this box for a while. Uh, the cord was pretty well encrusted with old styrofoam. And if you didn't know, uh, certain types of plastics will interact with this packing foam and it will kind of dissolve and become part of whatever it's touching. That's why usually when they pack products, they have uh, another bag that the product sleeves into, so it's not in direct contact with that foam as it breaks down. So this is our deck. This is what we'll be using for the project today. But to do that, I'm going to need a cassette interface cable, which I don't have. So. I guess it's time to make one. While this cable making montage goes by, I wanted to take just a second to talk about the fact that all of the components that I used for this project were obtained at a local electronics store in my community. And I mentioned this because I think many of us do a lot of our shopping online for components for projects. And I know that myself, if I can find it locally, I will always do that first. And I feel very fortunate to have an electronics store in my town. Uh, we all remember when Radio Shack and Fry's were commonplace and we could go and pick up parts. But uh, these days, it's few and far between that we find a local source for components. So I take every opportunity to go to that store and to buy the things that I need or even order them if they don't have them. It takes a little while longer to get the parts. I may pay a few pennies more, uh, but it's really wonderful to be able to support a local business like this. Well, that's my public service announcement for this montage. All right, well, here's our finished cable. This should be what we need. So we've got the five pinned in connector and our headphone and microphone connectors, and then our little remote uh, connection that allows the Coco to turn the tape player on and off. So with our Coco, our cassette player, 
and our cable, this should be everything we need to get going. Now with our new cassette cable made, we can plug our tape deck to the Coco One and I have that all set up. And I do have to say, I really like the looks of the silver on the Sanyo cassette player with the silver on the Coco One, even though this isn't the proper Radio Shack TRS-80 uh, type of uh, tape deck, it, it really, I think, matches here really super well. All right, to get started, don't, I'm going to need a couple things. One, we're going to need a tape, and we're also going to need to boot up the Coco. So I'm going to get that done. So we're all set. And just in proper style, just like the old days, we have to get our tape set up, which part of that means winding past the leader. So if you used cassettes back in the old days or you still use cassettes now, yeah, it's fairly common practice so that when you have that first program go to tape, that you, there we go. You don't have to wait for the leader to play through. And I know that some special made cassettes for data recording, those little 10 and 15 minute tapes, a lot of them didn't really have much leader. This is a normal bias tape. It's not one of those fancy uh, metal tapes or such that we had for audio recording back in the 80s and 90s just a plain old normal bias tape. So we have our computer and our tape player set up. Now we need to quickly enter something just to see if this is going to work. So we'll do our hello world, but we're going to do it as hello from tape world. And we'll run. There we go. Now, the moment of truth. We need to save our new program to tape. And I know that one of the things we'll want to do is to have play and record set on the tape player. And you notice the tape player isn't running because we do have the, the cable set here so the Coco can turn the tape player on and off. So. To save this, we need to do a C save. And we'll call this um, first tape. Now, when I hit enter, if this is going to work, the tape deck should start. And it is. Okay, so wow, that didn't take long, but that's a pretty short program. So now we'll get ready to rewind it. Oh, I can't do that yet uh, because it's the tape player's off. The Coca hasn't turned it back on, so let's do C load. First tape. And when I hit enter, we should get a little S up in the screen that says that it is searching for our program. So we'll do that. So we have the S and I'm going to rewind it really quickly. And if I have the volume set right and I have the volume just kind of in the middle, when this encounters the program, it should load. I know sometimes with these, you have to fiddle with the volume control just a little bit to get it to load up. Oh, there we go. And it looks like it truncated the title just after the first two, four, six, eight characters. So it looks like we're limited to eight character names. And it says that it loaded our tape. But how do we really know it did? Because I did not clear the uh, program from memory. So it could just be our lucky day. And 
it could have already been there it did say it loaded it but I want to do this one more time I want to do new so that we clear it we can see that yes memory is empty and then we'll do our C load again and I think I can just type the first eight characters and it's going to search there it found it and loaded it there we are so success my custom made cassette cable is working just fine and so is this little Sanyo cassette recorder um, so this is great now we have a system that we can actually enter software onto and save it so this is infinitely more useful now now I apologize I've changed my lighting here just a little bit because I have this the TV monitor sitting next to me and it was catching a little bit of glare so I've turned one of my two lights off um, so that we can be sure to catch that um, clearly now that we're able to save programs I thought I would just pull up something for fun from the getting started with color basic manual and that's the second book uh, besides this one that is the kind of basic operations manual there's another one for programming in basic and I do not have a paper copy of it so I'm reading off this um, from a PDF file sadly I do plan to get that book so that I have everything that came with the original computer all right so we're going to put in a program and I want to put in something a little bit larger to save to tape and this is just going to be exciting and I hear everybody just jumping off the ship right now um, but I will fast forward through this but I'm going to put in one of the example programs called the computer space and it was in the old manual so this is just for fun Well, there we have it. Our color computer has a, well, not a happy face, but a face. So that was just something quick so that we have a program to save the tape. And there is another tape command that I want to use to do that. So we'll break out of this and then I'll do a quick program listing. So we have the listing of our program and we have, um, that first program on this tape and I don't want to overwrite it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, rewind this tape so when on the computer turns the, the tape deck back on I'm going to rewind and I'm going to use a skip file command to um, look through the files on the tape and then what the system should do is to add this new program at the end after the file name that I specify as the last file so let's do that so let's do a skip file so it's skip F and we're going to go our last program on this tape is first TA So now if I hit play it will take us through the tape and go past that file and then we'll be able to do our C save at that point okay so it's all set now we're ready to save our new program so let's do a C save face
All right, well, hey, this is infinitely more usable now. We have this um, cassette tape player so that we can now um, save the software that I'm working on. It's, this is good. So now what I need to do is probably find something more useful to do with this computer than the exercises in the book. And I think that'll be my journey ahead. I'm going to try to track down, of course, the extended basic, uh, extended color basic book. I'd like to have that. And I am going to probably have to make a ROM adapter uh, to be able to burn the extended basic ROM for this computer. But that's what's next. As I mentioned before, I don't plan on really modifying this Coco other than to get the extended basic in it. So this is going to stay a, a plain 16K uh, Coco with extended basic, and I'll probably even just stick with cassette at this point. And I'll throw a little more effort into maybe um, fully decking out a Coco 2 or finding a Coco 3 and then maybe doing some more serious work on that. But for now, this is just to have fun with, and I thought it would be uh, an interesting project for myself to get it to a point where I can save software and learn a little more about using it. So that's where I am now. Uh, that's really all I had today, just a quick short video and an update on the color computer. And uh, of course, you will see a little bit more of this in the future uh, if I do anything uh, noteworthy with it. Uh, I have some other videos coming up where I'm going to take a look at some other uh, computers that I've picked up over the last several months. I kind of have a backlog of new retro gear that I haven't even had a chance to go through. So hopefully you'll come back and check out some of that. And thanks for watching.